Uh, thank you, Dr. Campbell, uh, for the nice introduction. And by the way, congratulations for taking uh, therapy into trials. Uh, this is very difficult, as we all know. So uh, persistence pays, and uh, you get a, uh, a gold star. Let's see if I can pull this. Well, thank you. Oh, can everyone see this? Uh, not yet. I got it then. Go back to the share screen. Give me that. Okay. Unfortunately, it just disappeared. I'm going to have to go back and recharge. Okay. It. Sorry about that. So far, we can't see. It's loading again. Oh, okay, it's loading. I got it. Okay. Now I'll try. Share screen. Can you see it now? Not yet. Ah, here we go. That looks promising. I think you have shared the entire desktop, though. Um, oh, I do that. How do I get rid of that? When you hit share screen, you can just select that application, the PowerPoint, or uh, not right. sure how. I or you could make it full screen. Um, yeah. Will that work? If, if you go to the three buttons at the top left, you should be able to expand to fill up the whole screen. Just just increase the size of the window. Got it. There we go. Sorry about hey. that. All right, that's it. All right, good luck. So first I want to uh, thank the uh, Brain Foundation for uh, sponsoring the synchrony meeting. Uh, since I'm a newcomer from the clinical therapeutic field, I have really found your conference to be uh, extremely informative. And a, a special thanks to Pramila as Mission Control, who's done an amazing job at herding all of these cats along. So, uh, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. We, uh, we believe we have a precision medicine company that's aimed at predicting autism before symptoms exist, and ultimately to allow parents a choice for 10 to 25% of watches and cases per year, which I will uh, explain later in the next uh, detail. Uh, this is the first ever actionable diagnostic uh, test we feel for assessing the risk of having an autistic child. A and it's really based on uh, the uh, decade long work of Dr. Judy Vandewater at the UC Davis Mind Institute, who many of you know. We believe it represents a really fundamental breakthrough for a subtype of uh, ASD biology simply by testing the mother's blood for autoimmune antibodies to fetal brain proteins, somewhat akin to the antifolate receptor antibodies described by Dr. Quantros uh, yesterday. So this is a precision medicine opportunity because we think it's the only technology that can both test for a child's risk of ASD before symptoms exist, and eventually serve as a companion diagnostic to allow parents to decide if they wish the mother to be treated with a novel therapeutic antibody that could eliminate these autoantibodies, allowing parents to have a normal child in 10 to 25% of ASD cases. More on this later with the details. We think there's a sizable market for this simple maternal blood test, which I'll explain as we, uh, as we go along. So I'll spend a moment uh, on our team here. Uh, Dr. Marnon Kligfield is chairman of Marabio. He was on the board of Cure, Cure Autism uh, now that has merged into Autism Speaks. He has an autistic child and is well-versed in all the uh, aspects of ASD care and is a Marabio founder and the champion of our, our technology. Uh, Chuck Gardner is also a founder and was actually one of the builders of the UC Davis Mind Institute. Uh, he was the founder of Advanced Education, 
and a founder of Hello Housing for ASD, built houses for ASD children. He is currently on the board of community living options and he has a child with autism and is an especially helpful uh, contributor. Uh, Vince Lorenzo is former chairman of the board of Becton Dickinson and recently joined our board. He has an autistic family member and is an enormous asset as an advisor on establishing the diagnostic uh, testing strategy for our company. Uh, Judy Vanderwater, who you, uh, many of you know, has been working on this for over a decade. She made the amazing discovery and is the scientific founder of Mirabio. She's a real champion. I'm a, a pediatric immunologist. Uh, I was ironically drafted into the Navy from Boston Children's Hospital to manage their radiation injury program uh, as I had done bone marrow transplant. My Navy group was the first one to determine what HLA matching was necessary for uh, successful marrow transplant. And my colleagues and I with congressional approval founded the National Marrow Donor Program, which has actually helped uh, over 100,000 people uh, receive transplants. I moved on to be Chief Scientific Officer of Senecor, where my team developed, as they noted, the first anti-TNF inhibitor called infliximab or Remicade for rheumatoid arthritis, Crohn's disease, and psoriasis, uh, which is still sold for, by J&J &J for over a billion dollars a year. I moved on and became General Manager of Roche Bioscience, which is formerly Syntex for eight years. Uh, so I've recycled several times. I went on to be founding CEO of Oncomed, a therapeutic antibody company. Uh, and then I joined a venture fund, went over to the dark side and invested in 10 to 15 companies. Two of them were antibody uh, diagnostic technologies. We founded several companies that uh, made drugs bought by uh, Big Pharma. And one of them is actually selling for over a billion dollars a year. So I've done a lot of different things as we moved along. These are our, our key opinion leaders. Some shared with colleagues presenting at this meeting uh, who have provided superb advice to us for uh, how we manage the development of this test. And the developmental specialist, we have Dan Corey, who I'm sure many of you know from Nationwide Children's, uh, Robin Hansen from UC Davis Mind Institute, and uh, Tom Fraser, the former CSO of Autism Speaks, all are phenomenal advisors uh, for us. We also have David Traver, uh, a very insightful local pediatrician here in Palo Alto that has a huge ASD practice, even a prenatal practice in his uh, pediatric uh, group. We also have OB and IVF specialists like Mary Poland, who ran the Stanford uh, IVF clinic, and Sandra Carlson, who runs the Yale IVF program, and Jan Frontford, who has a large OB pre practice here in the area with ASD families. We have Bobby Rethmiller to help us uh, design clinical trials, and Stan Lapidus is an advisor. Stan had a former company, Synaptics, for ASD genetic diagnosis. He also invented uh, the PAT. Paps, Preps, Paps, Spear, and Cologuard. So he, he's an amazing person with sage advice. Lastly, we have Nina Agenofor, an expert in diagnostic trials, statistical analysis, AI, and machine learning from Stanford University, who's really validated our technology. Our internal team is made up of several experts in their field. Uh, as we convert this laboratory test, to a commercially available test, which is a real challenge. Mags McInerney is an expert in analytical development, for both CLIA and FDA IVD diagnostics. John Stinsky was actually part of the initial PCR team at CEDIS. He became CSO at CareDX and was at Quest Diagnostics and Roche Molecular. He has a wealth of experience and an amazing person to have help us. Catherine Tynan has commercialized a whole range of tests both in the CLIA area and in the uh, FDA approved in vitro diagnostic space. Nikki Zoll and Kathy Nichols are helping us with marketing. And uh, Deborah Shuren, uh, with uh, the huge amount of experience as our chief financial officer. And Michael Paul has recently joined us. Michael you, was the founder and CEO of Lineagen, a very successful ASD genetics diagnosis company. Uh, there's nothing that we're doing that Michael hasn't already done. So he's a uh, tremendous uh, advisor for us. So uh, we've uh, heard several times now the new CDD, CBC estimate of one in 44. 
uh, we uh, also see this as increasing on a worldwide basis, not just in the US. And as Dr. John Slattery mentioned yesterday, it's increased 241% in the past two decades. Uh, we have got worldwide uh, rights for our uh, tests, and so you'll hear more about that later. Uh, because there are really limited options to determine the risk before symptoms exist for ASD, and a delayed diagnosis really leads to delayed access to the critical interventional therapy that we're all aware of. There's a unique challenge to getting children's into the early children into the earliest intervention. Uh, the behavior-based rules are not really reliable until the child is about two. Average age, as you've heard from several of uh, the prior speakers, is about four because there's a large backlog in developmental pediatricians and psychiatrists and psychologists to examine and begin treatment of these children. There's also a lack of consensus about who should actually be referred and when. Our KOLs tell us if a child has missed a developmental milestone, as say a positive MCHAT, or the parents are concerned, they would actually order our test and if positive would move the child to the head of the line for the clinical evaluation and earliest uh, interventions to give the child the best earliest chance. We feel the technology could conceivably decrease the time to intervention by 12 to 36 months with a reduced lifetime cost and benefit for not just the child, but the family and the community as well. We all know that the window of opportunity in these child's lives is small, where we can achieve the best outcomes. So we at Mirabai are trying to get them into therapy as early as possible. If even before symptoms, parents can plan a proactive therapy for them. So Judy uh, has developed some very innovative science behind this biology. I'll spend a uh, few moments on this uh, graphic view of how this happens. Some women, for unknown reasons, have preformed antibodies to infant brain proteins that they carry for years before and after pregnancy. At the time of pregnancy, these antibodies cross the placenta at about day 100 and damage the infant brain. You can see from the brain pathology slide on the right, from the animal that has autistic behaviors induced by immunization with these marrow proteins, that the neurites are blunted. So the brain's electrical system is not well connected. I was very interested in Dr. Lipton's comments about his MEF2 activator and neurite outgrowth. Dr. Vanderwater has published over 15 peer reviewed publications that support the findings. The most recent was very compelling. We'd be happy to send you a copy. As we use uh, these, uh, our Stanford statistician to validate, validate the, uh, the findings that we had made. Uh, the test is very highly predictive. There are very few pulse positive and we have a proprietary uh, position. What convinced me to join this effort is seen here. And that was the passive MARA antibodies given to primates resulted in offspring with autistic behaviors. This is an extremely compelling proof of concept in a primate. I doubt of any other technologies have anything similar improving the uh, theory of their, their test. Here are the eight specific proteins. Uh, it's noteworthy that these brain proteins really exist in fetal humans, primates and rodents, and they're largely downregulated down -regulated in, in, in uh, adults. Uh, so Dr. Vanderwater has developed animal models where the offspring of animals immunized with these marrow proteins demonstrate antisocial autistic-like behavior. Uh, the videos, videos of these animals is very gripping. This immunopathology slide just shows that the antibodies do actually render, enter the brain tissue uh, of these uh, animals that are immunized. Now I'll, I'll spend time for some clinical correlation data. Uh, the test is a standard ELISA test. Uh, we've done two retrospective and two prospective studies. Uh, others are uh, being performed to date. So here is some of the data. The two prospective studies as outlined uh, involved analyzing samples in a blinded manner then calculated the accuracy of predicting an ASD outcome. 
which was very high as seen, almost uh, over 99%. We use this for validating the laboratory developed tests. The two prospective tests use samples drawn during pregnancy for other reasons. Then the patient was followed for fetal outcome. Again, the test predicted ASD outcome very accurately in over 95% of the cases. With 700 samples analyzed, the data really supports the MERA hypothesis with real biology versus algorithmic uh, associations. We initially planned to use the test to get children to the earliest beneficial therapy. Other follow-on indications will be for women with a prior ASD child wishing to become pregnant today. Again, if she uh, has the antibodies, uh, she'll have another autistic child. Women over 35 contemplating their first pregnancy or women in IVF programs. Our OB-IVF consultants strongly support these particular indications. Now, we will not be testing any pregnant women. Now let's move on to the therapy potential for this. This is the next generation of things coming along. So there's a new technology called anti-FCRN antibodies, just being approved for therapy in various autoimmune conditions, like myasthenia gravis, where the patient has autoantibodies to their own acetylcholine receptor, which causes severe weakness. The five current companies uh, that have these antibodies in trials are, are seen on the right here. I think one or more of them will get FDA approval uh, probably this year or early next year. When anti-FCR antibodies are administered, as shown on the graph on the left, serum IgG antibodies can basically be eliminated. Momenta, purchased by J&J, uh, &J, was actually treated pe pregnant women who had antibodies to infant red cells where the first baby failed to survive. The therapy allowed a normal child to be delivered. The rest of the trial is still in progress, but the uh, proof of concept that this can be done is clear and safely. The uh, science behind this has to do with how the body processes circulating IgG antibodies. The IgG binds to FC receptors on various endothelial cells. If the antibody is damaged, uh, it immediately goes to the proteasome and is converted into its amino acid. If not, it's recycled back into the circulation. Uh, if the FCRN is blocked, uh, then all of the antibodies are, are degraded. Uh, the FCRN is actually also the same receptor that allows antibodies to cross the placenta to the, uh, to the baby. So anti-FCRN actually blocks both. Uh, Mara Bios filed intellectual property on the use of anti-FCRN for uh, Mara indication. Uh, shown here is a rodent that's been immunized with Mara proteins and has antibodies to CRIMP1. Uh, we reduced the CRIMP1 antibodies with a single dose of anti-FCRN as a proof of concept that this can be done at least in an animal model. Let's look at our uh, timelines and market size for uh, this particular test. So we are partway through analytical uh, validation. Uh, we'll be doing a clinical validation study in parallel. Uh, the anti-FCRN program will need quite a lot of animal model proof of concepts, which will probably take eight to 12 to 18 months or, or more to do. Uh, the potential market size for the Mara test is large and growing. Uh, you can see the numbers, uh, almost three quarters of a million people might be eligible for, for the test. So it's a very large market. Uh, so we think our test represents a paradigm shift Shift is a simple maternal blood test, provides accurate risk for having a child diagnosed with ASD even before symptoms exist, gives us the earliest risk assessment and the earliest best therapy for uh, the children with the lower cost, providing clinically actionable information for clinicians and choice for parents. We have a very proprietary position, large serviceable market, uh, low risk uh, regulatory business model, a CLIA uh, regulated test not requiring FDA. We have a number of exit opportunities with different groups. And uh, for the larger vision, uh, these proteins have genes, RNA, pathways, and epigenetic influence. And they finally allow the vast genetics database to correlate with real biology that we can show damages the, uh, the brain. And it maybe give us new aspects to ASD, including potential therapies. 
So I will uh, stop there and I'm happy to answer uh, any questions you might have. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Woody. And um, so there are a couple of questions showing up here that I, I can see. I think we have time for maybe one or two. 